Welcome back to another Deep Z Dokkan battle video. So today I'm going to talk about the recent news that happened in Dokkan. Um, during these videos, I don't really know what to do, so I'm just going to put footage of me in the background farming links or farming currency from certain events. Um, if you have any suggestions in future, uh, you can always let me know. On the right hand screen, you'll see kind of information from the Super Dragon Ball Heroes announcements that have popped up. So this is a preview at kind of the Super Dragon Ball Heroes event that is happening for part two of the global celebration and is happening as a crossover global kind of international celebration with Japan. So they did an announcement video today at Dokkan Now and Sho, the Japanese guy who is awesome by the way, he uh, kind of presented all this information to us. So one of the first things we learned is that we're going to have the new challenge event, uh, which is the Protect History Time Patrol event. It's going to be pretty similar to an Infinite Dragon Ball History event. I assume it's going to just have some crossover characters and some interesting mechanics from that aspect. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see a crossover character challenge or a time traveler's character challenge, uh, maybe a DB Heroes character challenge, uh, something like that along those lines that will be whether you build your team on those categories. It looks like it could be interesting. I don't know if they'll go with the idea of having stronger stages in the front, like the Goku and Vegeta family event, or just kind of a longer event like the LGE event. We'll wait and see, but it could definitely be fun, and you'll get 25 stones, so it's definitely worth it. The next event that was announced is the Super Dragon Ball Heroes Dark Empire Saga. It's a story event, uh, which is always nice, and it'll drop a couple stones. It'll probably have some medals that you need, and they said there'll definitely be medals that you need to awaken not only the free-to-play unit, but some of the other DB Heroes units that have come out over the past couple years. Uh, it could also drop some decent items, we don't really know just yet. But we do know that it drops this new free-to-play crossover Super Dragon Ball Heroes unit, uh, which is very nice. It's always nice to get new free-to-play units. Uh, this unit looks like it's buffed by the crossover category and that it works well on crossover category teams, which makes sense because this event's kind of bringing in the new crossover category, uh, which is what I assume consists currently of Xenoverse characters and Dragon Ball Heroes characters. But it may include uh, in future Xenoverse 2 characters and some characters from maybe even DB Legends, the other mobile game, they have Shadow there. Um, so it could be interesting. Um, in terms of this event, I assume it's going to give quite a few stones. Uh, sometimes these crossover events are not very long. Uh, if you remember the Super Dragon Ball Heroes event from last year where we got the Great Saiyan beat, the event wasn't necessarily super long but it did drop a decent amount of rewards. So it'll be interesting to see how they work some of the story in and a nice little snapshot for a lot of global players who maybe don't play Super Dragon Ball Heroes on Switch. And we don't really have the arcade machines in Europe or where I am in Africa. So it'll be nice to see how we get like a glimpse at the whole demons versus Saiyans kind of time traveling intergalactic dimensional battle that's going on. <laughs> basically the ultra fan service events that are happening. So yeah, that would be pretty cool. Uh, they then showed us a glimpse at the free-to-play character um, and the kind of his tool set. So the free-to-play character is essentially just this card that's appearing here. He gains a whole bunch of extra dodge chance and a whole bunch of extra buffs based on how many crossover units are in the team. So it'll be interesting to work them into some builds and everything. I don't know what the link sets are going to be like on these new crossover characters. That's always one that's up for debate. You would generally assume that they have link sets that are similar to the kind of characters that they are. You know, the Great Ape characters or the SS4 characters would have Saiyan based link sets. But if they're anything like the Golden Cooler, they're kind of cross hybrids. They end up being like half time travelers, half whatever category they should be. It is a little bit weird. But generally they'll have like three links that'll work them into a team. In terms of talking about these new kind of categories, um, I'm a fan of the crossover category. I'm not a fan that it didn't replace the DB Heroes category. It doesn't really matter because one is a subset of the other, so you can always essentially just run everything in the crossover category. 
but it does just make it a little bit weird to have a signature crossover category and then a full-on crossover category. But it makes sense because DB Heroes is big enough to eventually develop its own units and whereas crossover allows you to incorporate some other units from maybe things like Xenoverse or DB Legends into that kind of DB Heroes environment and gives them just a little bit more versatility. So that is nice at the end of the day. The next thing they spoke about was that they were going to bring in some of the new characters. We have an SS4 Gohan, an SS4 Bardock, an SS4 Burly and the SS4 Vegito, the SS4 Vegito being the headliner of the banner. And he's going to probably pair well with the SS4 Gogeta that just came out on Japan. Since SS4 Gogeta is the great A power lead, it's going to be nice to see all these units fleshing out his category. And then of course we see the two new demon cards, the Demon Lord Debura and the new Toa, who is from Xenoverse I believe helping to fill out the crossover categories and the DB Heroes categories, which is nice, especially since DB Heroes is lacking some extreme unit synergy. These will also probably be good cards across the board for extreme SBR mono category stages, and of course, maybe some new extreme SBR stages that will be coming out at a later stage, plus some normal SBR stages that are coming out at a later stage. I generally like summoning on the Heroes banners, most people don't advise it, but I like getting featured SSRs purple and I like the fact that you get a good amount of cards dedicated to the category. As much as it's not nice that they're a little bit limited, I think as the category grows the banner will become more valuable, um, so that's good to see. Then we'll see that there is an awakening for some of the older units, most of these will be using the medals from the free to play event. So it'll be nice to see how these cards awaken for players who've had them sitting in their box for a while. I'm sure it'll be great to see them added into the categories and just kind of made more viable in this current setup and the current meta of Dokkan today. In terms of the units themselves, um, I can see most of them being at a decent level. The Awakenings these days have been all around pretty good and kind of uniform in terms of quality, I want to say. Ever since the cooler era, uh, most of the DFE TURs and even the subsection TURs that have been coming out have been really good. So I think it's definitely worth it to summon on these banners. Most things you'll pull will be super helpful. And I mean, at the end of the day, you pull for what you want. So if you're not interested in Jiren or the LR Blue Goku and Blue Vegeta that are coming up, I'm not going to tell you not to summon on this banner. From a free-to-play aspect, if you're looking for the absolute most value, um, I definitely think throwing maybe a full set of discount multis if they exist at the spanner is not a bad idea, especially if it's maybe 90 stones for the first three pulls or 100 stones for the first three pulls. I think that's pretty good. Uh, then we take a look at the cards. Uh, Vegito is pretty good. He supports crossover category and he supports the great eight power category, which means he's going to have good synergy with Gogeta. And he's basically got a high chance of evasion. He's a very nice Vegeta build. And he's going to really help out the Great A Power team. And obviously he leads the crossover category team. So having him there for synergy between some of the units, especially if their link sets are a little bit wonky, like I say, makes him quite a valuable TUR. And especially his one key in attack and defense plus 20%, it's really just going to buff up that giant ape category even more. Attack and defense 140% is also just pretty good considering he himself basically gives himself another attack and defense 20% as well. I assume if not, if it doesn't apply to him, then he'll just be at 140%, which is still pretty good. We then get obviously to his category, he leads the crossover category, it's 170% attack, HP and defense, key plus 3. It's a very good leader skill, the 170% across the board. For such a limited category is kind of standard much like Universe 7 or Universe 6 or Universe 11, these kind of categories where there's a few limited options generally get the higher leader skills because it really just helps them be viable, especially with such limited options that you might have. Free to play player may only have like six units for a six-man team. The Gohan's pretty good. He's a, basically a tank, I want to say, um, for the Great A Power team. The damage reduction plus his high base stats will make him a very, very, very decent tank. 
he has utility with his stun and so overall he's probably your standard great a power espr build he could probably work on hybrid sands he could definitely work on a couple of categories as long as you've got some giant a powers on there we then get to the bardock the bardock is the kind of opposite of the gohan in that he's an offensive unit for the crossover team instead of being something that specializes in being on a giant a power team he's definitely built for the crossover category he gains a whole bunch of buffs depending on whether he's on a crossover category team and then of course he just does a significant amount of offense if you're high on health he will crit and if you're high on health he will do super effective attacks if you fall below health he won't be so he's just a nice card to have that kind of suits that crossover environment the broly is kind of the anti vegeto i want to say or the extreme option He's also got the high base stats and he's got the high chance of doing another super attack. But again, he seems to be more giant A power uh, orientated. But it's always nice to see more Burleys added into the game. Especially if he's got a nice link set. Maybe he'll be one of the few Burleys with big bad bosses. I doubt it. Um, they all seem to have Berserker. But I mean, still, it'll be nice to have that Burly into the game. And an extreme Saiyan option is always appreciated. Debora is next. He's got a very, 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 very good link set. Um, I mean, passive. He's got a very strong passive. He looks like he's definitely built for ESBRs and SBRs. He has a debuff when you're facing one enemy. He has a high chance of evasion. And when you're facing two enemies, he gains extra defense. So he he really just looks like he's built for handling those high impact early stages of events or sbrs or any kind of challenging content the toa is definitely a support based card um she already flat out gives key plus three in attack and defense of 30 to all allies which is really good because it's not category based or type based and then she has a high chance to give even further buffs especially to extreme class allies if you're low on health she kind of comes in clutch with a massive defensive raise and the health recovery so she's a big support unit for extreme teams both of them lead the dragon ball heroes category 150 percent leads across the board also very very nice just really really good to have options comparatively to foo especially since your chances of getting these two is a lot higher and it just helps you kind of spread out the category as well gives some versatility and then yeah, just this last note, I saw that the event's probably going to come up on Wednesday at 9 o'clock PST time, as that's when the Super Dragon Ball Heroes World Missions kick in. So be prepared for them, that's about Thursday, 8 o'clock my time. But yeah, that's all. Let me know what you think in the comments. Cheers, and bye.